Social media platforms slapping labels on President Trump and other Republicans' posts. Jim Jordan is with us, Republican congressman from Ohio. Jim, I know that you were shadow banned at one stage, yeah. and we know that conservative opinion is being censored here, but I want to know what can you do about it? Well, there's got to be consequences, Stuart. I mean, look, you're, 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 you're directly attacking free speech. And, and here's the thing that gets me. Why is it always just conservatives? I mean, what, what, where's the liberals? It's always just on the right. As you mentioned, two years ago, four members of Congress were shadow banned. Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, the president, Twitter puts on these labels on the president, censors the president. And then two days ago, Google tries to demonetize and cancel the Federalist. So you're going to continue to do this? There has to be consequence because this is a direct but like attack what? on the First Amendment. The well, we're counsel. looking at the we're looking at all kinds of it, whether it's the 230 issue, whatever it is. There's got to be liability. There's got to be consequences for these platforms who are who are systematically it now appears to be going after conservatives and only conservatives. Just last night they went after the, the president on a, on a video he yep. put out that was obviously everyone knows that has seen that video. Everyone knows what he was doing, and yet oh, this got to be labeled and it's got to be changed. So th this is scary where we're headed. And it's important that Congress step up and, and figure out what the right remedy is and then execute that remedy. Right. What do you make about the rally tomorrow in Tulsa, Oklahoma? I know they're lining up already. Uh, yeah. you, are you smiling or shaking your head? I'm not sure no, where you're going on this. No, it's, I'm going to be there. It's, it's wow. great to see that this, uh, you know, the American people connect with this president because they know this president's doing what he said he would do, having results, getting results, and is fighting for them. And what a contrast. Where we got a million people who want to come to Tulsa, Oklahoma for the first big rally now uh, post coronavirus. First big million people signing up for this who want to come, and Joe Biden who's still staying in the basement. So th that is the contrast right there. This president who wants to go out and talk to the American people, the very people he's been fighting for, versus Joe Biden, who I guess even Terry McAuliffe said today that they're better off keeping Joe Biden in the basement. So that's the contrast that's shaping up for this fall. And I think I think the American people who, who are who are so fed up with everything they're seeing in this politically corrupt uh, cancel culture. I mean, Stuart, you can't even take your boys fishing and wear the wrong T-shirt and you get in trouble, right? Yeah. I mean, th th this, so, is, this is crazy but, where it's so headed. What about, so what, what about the polls? What do you make of these polls? Every single reputable poll that I've seen puts Joe Biden ahead of Donald Trump and the latest Fox poll puts Biden 12 points ahead of the president. I mean, you, you can't just dismiss this. No, but I, I will say this. In, in 2016, that every reputable poll had Hillary Clinton ahead. Sure. And she sure. was, what, 99 to 1, uh, you know, favored the, the day of the election. And, boy, once the real poll happened on Election Day, suddenly those no numbers change. And we all know that, you know, obviously President Trump won. So I think the same dynamics in play. Look, here's what I see across the Midwest. Uh, I see, I see uh, last weekend was Flag Day, American flags everywhere, and guess what was right beside them? Trump 2020 flags. That's what I see because so many people, they may, they may not tell a pollster what they're thinking, but so many people are, are voting with putting the flag out and they will be voting the right way on Election Day. They are sick of what the left is up to in this country. They are sick of this whole idea, this whole concept, this insane public policy proposal from the Democrats which says defund the police dismantle police departments. I mean, they are sick of all this, and they want someone who's fighting for their values, fighting for the things he told them he was going to do, and that's President Trump. And that's why there's a million people who want to come to Tulsa in the middle of the summer uh, yeah, right. this, uh, this Saturday. Something. But you, you mentioned the 2016 election and Hillary Clinton. Uh, there is a parallel there, because Hillary Clinton was the, the, the um, she was running an ID, an identity politics campaign. And last night, Senator Klobuchar pulled out of the vice presidential contest for, to be with Joe Biden on the grounds that she wanted and she thought that Joe Biden should have a woman of color. That seems to me to be the replay of 2016. It's an ID politics all over again. The Democrats are presenting a p people and what, who they are as opposed to the president who's presenting a ticket of what they can do. Yeah, well, but then that's just the that's just the nature of the Democrat Party. They're they're the party of group politics. I mean, that's just who they are. So yeah, that, the Clinton campaign was that way. The Biden campaign is going to be that way because that's who they are. They're they're the party of, of of you know this group that group instead of being the party like here's what we want to do. 
here's what we want to get accomplished, here's the party of freedom, and here's the party who wants to do certain things. We I mean, think about this president. Prior to the coronavirus, we had the best economy ever. Taxes were cut, regulations reduced, economy growing, lowest unemployment in 50 years. This president said he was going to get it out of the Iran deal. Boom, he did it. This president said he was going to put the embassy in Jerusalem. He did it. This president said we we're going to get out of the Paris deal. He did it. He said he was going to take on China. He did it. That's what the American people appreciate, not this identity politics that the left always plays and the Democrat Party is now beholden to. So that is the choice. Do you want a party that says defund the police, group politics, raise your taxes, Obamacare, all that stuff? Or do you want someone like President Trump, who's doing what he said he was going to do, who cares about individual families, individual Americans, and letting them chase their goals, their dreams? That's the choice. And again, I think the American people have common sense. They're smart, and they're going to do an election day here in four months, just what they did on election day four years ago. They're okay, going to elect Jim. Donald Trump. So, Jim, can you give me 20 seconds on what the good people of the Midwest think about what's going on on the West Coast in Seattle and Portland? It's scary. It is, it is scary when you, when you look at de Blasio, our biggest city. The mayor said he was going to cut the police department in New York a billion dollars. Garcetti said he's going to cut it $250 million. The supermajority in the city council of Minneapolis said they're not only going to defund the police, they're going to abolish the police department. And you got Chaz forming in, in Seattle and Portland. This is scary stuff. And our people understand, I mean, the American people understand it. Our voters understand it, and they're not going to stand for it, I think, in the end. Well, that was about 25 seconds, but we will Sorry take it, that. Jim. No, no, Jim, that was good stuff. Jim Jordan, everyone.